Hello guys, Tools20 here and welcome back to Oceania. This is going to be a super fun episode. There has been a lot of developments, a lot of stuff happening behind the scenes that you might not have been aware of. And today we're going to be finally getting into some of those exciting things. So you might have remembered a couple of months ago, I did mention that I wanted to get some custom, custom stuff happening within Oceania. Some custom brands, some custom companies, just a bit of a uniqueness happening within this series and a bunch of people have jumped on board uh, including someone who I'm going to uh, talk about in just a sec but yeah all that stuff has happened and we're starting to get to some of those awesome creations that people have been creating for Oceania this series so we're going to be getting to the bus network in today's episode something that I usually leave towards the end of my series because you generally need a pretty good idea of your roads before you can start figuring out the buses. Uh, I already have a pretty good idea where my roads are going. Here they are. I mean, that's pretty much the bulk of them. Um, at least that's where the main roads are going, and that's what we really do need a good idea about. Um, plus, we do need to know where some of the big things within the city are going to go, i.e. the airport and the downtown, and I have a bit of an idea of where I want some other aspects to go, which I'll talk about. But um, yeah, we can finally start into some of the buses. Plus, I now have some custom buses that are going to be driving around Dundee streets. They have been created by an asset creator that I'm sure you have seen on the Steam Workshop. Uh, he is the creator of The Ride Company, which is now operating within Dundee. His name is Blue Thunder and he has created the fleet of Dundee buses that we're going to be using in Dundee and they just look pretty cool. So this is a custom library he's made. Um, there is this awesome signage on the side of all these buses. Um, I'm going to talk about these adverts in just a second, but the buses just look so sick. He's done a full full fleet of different types. So we got some more modern ones. There are some more retro looking buses that I um, asked him to create. There's different types of library as well. So it does um, change depending where you are, um, like what service is happening in that area. Uh, there's double decker two, something that we're going to start, you know, getting into a little later as this, um, this airport, maybe a little closer than you might expect. Um, definitely some of this too. I mean, we'll probably have to We'll probably have to come back to the coaches because I would like to do that in, um, you know, once we start figuring out some of the other towns around Oceania. But um, yeah, these just look so good. And he's also teamed up with some of the people who are creating some companies within Oceania. So this is where it gets a little bit crazy. So these are, these um, aren't just adverts that he's grabbed from the, from just Google. These are created by other creators that have been on Discord. Mount Grey is now a company within Oceania and there is a whole bunch of other stuff that's been created for this, including science to go inside the buildings, other billboards. And just in case you're wondering, Mount Grey is actually a mountain within Oceania. It sits out here and at some point when we start working on this town, there's going to be a factory that sits below this mountain, Mount Grey. That'll be producing that spring water for Oceania. So you'll be able to see the whole production chain from the source all the way to its factory within Dundee. And at the moment, Mount Grey uh, Water Company is just slapped onto the side of this bus, which is just pretty cool. So that's the buses, that's the fleet. Today, we're going to be focusing on the network and also expanding out a little bit of the city. So like I said, we do already have a pretty good idea where some of the main roads are. And I do know where I want most of the big parts of the city to sit. So what I am thinking I'm going to do is I would like to place down some sort of bus depot in some, some area of the city. Maybe out this way, maybe it sits in this area here. I've already got one that's just, just temporary, just thinking about it. So it might sit out here. I don't know if we're going to put some sort of industrial warehousey area over this spot. Yeah, I haven't really quite decided, but I think that's where I'm going to need to put it. I also want to place down a couple of terminals. Not a not a massive fan of this guy, but I'm a pretty big fan of these. And I've never really properly implemented these that well. So I would actually like to give that a pretty good go. They are super duper noisy, so I do need to think about whereabouts I'm going to be placing them. Um, but I do think a couple of these around the city would be really cool. But for this guy, what I'm thinking, I think I might place it. Uh, you know, let's just do this now. 
So around here we have Central Station and I think if we're going to have a bus terminal somewhere, I think it should probably be around the Central Station. The only problem is, is that noise pollution is kind of great uh, in a bad way. So I need to think about, I mean, is that going to be a problem? I think these guys are going to absolutely hate it, but we might just have to see what happens. I also think I'm going to need a little more room than just this spot here. So I'm thinking of using this whole space over here for some sort of bus terminal or bus usage or something like that, because I think this is pretty good, pretty good for that sort of thing. Um, or it could potentially be this. I don't know. I'm going to work on this whole area in this episode. So it's not going to be just working on the network. It's also going to be the infrastructure. And speaking of infrastructure, we will have to figure out where that bus depot is going to go, whether it does sit out this way or whether we create another spot for it. I actually think I'm not going to use this building. And instead, there are some warehouses that I think they look pretty much like a bus terminal. So they could actually be used and I'm also thinking potentially just doing something like something like that. So it is actually functioning like a bus depot, but it's just hidden inside. Uh, something with procedural objects might work quite nicely. I don't know. <laughs> we might have to work on that one. Um, but yes, that is going to be today's episode. It's going to be super fun. Uh, I haven't really done a proper bus network before. I've always just sort of done kind of just wherever. Just thought about wherever. I'll just place them there and not really giving it too much thought. So this one is going to take a little bit of thought and hopefully it comes out fairly realistic. And hopefully it does does get people around the city pretty well rather than causing more problems within my city. So we'll see how things go. Okay, dokes, let's do it. Whoa, all right, there we go. A bit of a change in color settings on uh, this time lapse. That's uh, definitely something I always struggle with. I always think that my color settings are fine the way they are, and then you just get used to it, and then you load up the game again and change the colors again. So I never really have any set in stone color settings. I change them constantly. So <laughs> that's um, probably why you've seen um, a lot of different changes throughout my time lapses and live play, just like that. But um, let's talk about this bus network. So I ended up only creating two lines in this build because there's still a little bit of mapping out I want to do in terms of the roads, in terms of where I want some of the other aspects of the city to go. And I do have a fairly good idea where those things are going to sit, but because they are fairly big, so, you know, let's, let's say for instance the Olympic Park, which is something I want to create, and I also want to do the airports, they're all going to have terminals that are going to be fairly large so I need to actually create proper networks for that so I just did the two so these are more like local buses that um, get people around the city and it's works so nicely you're gonna see me start putting that together pretty shortly um, but yeah those local buses uh, I spent definitely more time than I ever would creating a bus network for um for Dundee and it I just like a big appreciation for uh, bus networks in general that um, actually do their job but um, at the moment, we've just been working on this bus depot and this is going to be the main one in the city. And what I've done here is just use that technique that I was talking about in the live play. Um, I've just converted those warehouses into procedural objects, which means that they're just props. They don't really have any function um, other than looking a little bit better than the vanilla bus bus depot, which I've never been a fan of. And I've just hidden just is just hidden in there so that um it is an actual functioning bus depot which i quite like I, I think it looks much better than if i was to um yeah i don't know create find something custom on the workshop or try to um do something a little bit different now i'm just uh working on some of these line work this is going to be the main entrance and exits for the bus terminal and so bus depot i'm gonna probably keep getting that <laughs> mixed up in this um episode and you can see that some other vehicles are using that. I think it's because there's probably a shorter, it's like a shorter route going this way, even though it's not. I don't know, it, they just do it. But um, I am able to use Traffic Manager just to stop them from going in there so that only buses and service vehicles can get through there. Yeah, there we go. Start changing things up there. 
Um, I've also spliced behind this bus depot. I've also put in this absolutely awesome custom asset by uh, Klus, who created this maintenance, this road maintenance building. I've been wanting to use this for ages, but it's just such a great looking warehouse and it's got some really great props around it. So I've ended up just splicing into the back of that. It uh, just sort of seems to fit that, the style of building. So I think that works pretty well. And I've just also just placed in some of the bus props just to show that they're parked around there, probably waiting for the next routes or whatever. I don't know. Look, I'm going to be honest, buses aren't really my thing, but looking at uh, some inspiration, that seems to be generally the case. Just parks buses in the depot. I don't really know. If you guys know some things about buses, then um, yeah, hit me up in the comments. I might be able to implement some of those things later on down the track. Uh, we are now working on one of the routes. This is the first bus network that we're creating. It sort of snakes its way around the city. Um, it's going through some of the suburbs we've been creating around here, trying to make a go along some of the main roads. Uh, more, they're kind of a bit more built up for the infrastructure of um, this bus network. And it also goes through the heart of the city. There's a main bus stop in the heart of the city um, right next to the town hall. I'm also going to put a metro line there too. So it's going to be a pretty busy line. We'll have to probably work on that at some other point. And I'm also just... Uh, Selecting the vehicles that I want to be driving around. I can't remember the mod or what's what this mod is called But it's pretty great for these sort of networks because you can select the vehicles you want driving around your streets So I've just created this line that has um, a bunch like a real real mix of them. I guess Down the track and I would love to do another episode on this maybe even two episodes on this where we you know, select the right vehicles for the right networks so that we are because some of them some of these buses have like double or triple the amount of capacity and I think they will be better suited for some of these busier lines. I think this line won't be massively busy because it's mostly going through the suburbs of the city. So we'll, we can just tackle that just later on down the track. Uh, but super fun, like I really enjoyed doing this. I would really love to start taking a better look at the network and seeing what else we can um, put in when we get a bit more of the city established. But um, we are now working on the second route. This one is going to be a much busier network because there is... It's just some of the busier terminals. It's some of the more busier areas of Dundee. We are going past Central Station. We're going through Hipsterville. We're going into the city. We're going around the harbour. It's really just a um, busy line. So trying to make sure that we are going to be selecting some of the higher capacity vehicles for that one. Uh, I'm also going through some of the... You know, I learn stuff all the time with this game. <laughs> this is like I was learning that these uh, bus lanes, or these roads that have bus lanes on them, you actually have to turn off the traffic on those lanes. So like, make it so that only buses are using those bus roads. I don't know whether that's a thing or not, but it definitely helped out my um, traffic flow much better around there. Speaking of traffic flow, we are... Just changing some of the roads around here, this uh, main road that goes past Hipsterville, I wanted just to make sure that we are only, you know, only some lanes really do need to have stop signs, not stop signs, traffic lights. Um, the other ones, they're only accessible via one of the roads and that's totally fine. It just encourages traffic to use some of the busier roads and just creates much better traffic flow for that road, which I do want to be one of the main roads within Dundee. All right, this is going to be a pretty fun part of the episode because we're going to be now focusing on this main bus terminal on Central Station. So this actually took up the bulk of the episode because I just got like so carried away with this and you know figured if we're going to build this, we're going to build this properly. So this is what we're doing here. Ended up dragging this terminal closer to the main building because that way people are more able to ex like access it before when it was closer to the suburbs around there it just wasn't really doing its job this way people are actually going to use it um, I did already have a bus stop that was right out the front of the uh, the central station and you can see there's just so many people there and so many tourists as well which is really fun just knowing that so many people are actually visiting the city but um, it just did not make a lot of sense for all those people to be just gathered around that one stop so we're going to use that terminal. So I'm just going to shortly remove that stop and you're just going to see just huge amounts of people all of a sudden 
just uh, trying to get to that terminal, but that'll be in just a sec. We are working on this intersection that I wanted to have a dedicated um, or a couple of dedicated lanes just so they can access this terminal a little bit easier than they were before. So um, that's what we're doing here. Using Traffic Manager, we're also using uh, the Node Controller too. Super powerful, super amazing mod. And I wanted to make it so that people could turn left or right into that lane, into that road, without having to stop at the light. So that's why we did that. And yeah, just trying to get the people to use that terminal over there. And here we go. <laughs> here they are, just like huge crowds of people. Just uh, just wanted to get over there. And it, it's kind of crazy. So <laughs> I... Uh, I do some fun little tricks here. This is where it gets really, really, really interesting. This is where the bulk of my time went because I wanted this to be absolutely perfect. And I just, I'm going to be honest, it's not totally perfect. I need to change a couple of little aspects of this. And I'll talk about that in just a short second. But um, what I am doing here with these invisible pathways is I'm dragging them through the terminal so that people are, rather than walking along the side of the road here to get to this bus stop, Instead, they can actually walk through the inside of the central station, which they would be doing in real life. And they do this because citizens within City Skylines, they will prefer using a footpath rather than walking along the side of the road, which is a really nice little feature. I don't know if they did that on purpose so that we can create more interesting networks for pedestrians, but it's just great because it means that you can drag some really fun invisible paths through your buildings so that people can actually use them. I also removed the pedestrian crossing on that main road and put an overpass so that people are using that instead, which works really well. Um, I will also change it so that it also accesses the other side of the road because it's uh, there's a bit of ugliness going on with the central station. There's some there's like a staircase that goes over the footpath and I don't really like it, so I use the overpass instead because there's like a, a bit of a staircase on the overpass and that just works much nicer. It just covers up a little bit of the ugliness. Now, the problem that I was experiencing with this terminal is that because there's a lot of people accessing that footpath that goes through the middle of the central station, it meant that they are also driving their cars out of the bus terminal. Now, I didn't really fix that. This is me trying to fix it, but unfortunately, it's not really something that I was able to fix. So if you've got any suggestions, hit me up. It um, It's causing a bunch of unnecessary traffic. It also looks quite unrealistic because vehicles would not be really allowed to go in there. So that's also something that bothers me. Uh, and some of my fixes for this, so some of the things I was trying and seeing if it was gonna work, uh, I was trying to create like a longer pathway that goes through there so that people are not wanting. So only people who are trying to catch the bus would go through there and then anyone else who are jumping into a car from the central station, they can instead take the closest road network, which is this drop off spot just here. Um, that was working a little bit, but not like a huge amount. And then um, I tried this mod, the building spawn point mod, and I thought that was going to solve everything, but there's not really an option that allows pedestrians to leave a um, building from a certain area. So that was not really working that well. So I'm kind of out of options. I just figured maybe it's got something to do with the network. This might be a fun live stream that we um, try and fix. But I don't know. Like, hit me up if you've got any suggestions. I'm kind of out. I'm out of I'm out of ideas. But um, for the rest of this area, I figured I should probably finish detailing this up. And this is why, again, we didn't really create any extra bus lines. Uh, you know, just I was I got a little bit distracted, and that's fine because I I'm quite happy that we worked on this instead of uh doing maybe unnecessary work with bus lines that we might end up changing down the track. Most probably going to change down the track. Uh, so I'm just creating something, I reckon really, really simple entrance here. This is nothing super grand. Um, the grand part of this station is at the main entrance. This sort of area is like a tacked on little extra bits that they probably would have built, I don't know, in the fifties or something. They would have gone, okay, people are actually driving to the, se the central station more than we expected, than we put the infrastructure in before. So they've now put it in this bus terminal and this drop off area, but it's not really anything too spectacular. Um, I also created this driveway that goes into the bus terminal so that the buses are actually using that. Well, at least most of the time they're using that. 
and I'm using this really great trick with some of these uh, asphalt networks where you can actually create really, really small networks and make it so that it looks like they are connecting up, uh, which is probably the best way of making driveways I've ever created. I was making some in Springfield before and it was taking way too long using way too many props and stuff. This one is just a much easier option. Now, this is like something I just, you know, I finished making that terminal and then I was like, you know, let's, let's just make, let's just finish off this suburb. <laughs> Why not? Because I just figured, I don't know, I've got like a bit of a problem when it comes to making these episodes. I always go over time, always try to do too much. I've created like a, you know, like a standard for these videos and I feel as if it increases in, rather than decreases. So it's becoming like a bit of a problem where I'm trying to do too much. So this is me trying to do too much. I'm going to try and just make a slightly small episode next week. Um, even though I'm most probably going to, um, it'll probably still be about 25 minutes. But this little suburb is all part of this super nice rich area of Dundee. Um, but this is just slightly more historical. It's less of these absolute mansions that have absolute killer views. This neighborhood is more of the historical federation types of houses you find in Sydney. There's a whole bunch of neighborhoods that look like this, really awesome beautiful cottages that have quite a lot of history amongst these places. There's a lot of sandstone, a lot of remnants of this old community because these places would have just been really secluded, really um, remote places. But um, now they're pretty close to the city, you know, they're, they're not exactly as far away as they used to be. There's highways that go like stretch right past them, there's main roads, um, bus, bus networks as this one now has. And they're just like all connected up. They're like super nice places, super, super nice areas within Sydney. And it's the same for Dundee. This place is uh, quite a nice little community. So that's the sort of architectural style we're going for. The houses, there's still a little bit of that big mansion, you know, the have completely knocked down the house, the old house, and they've just built something uh, much bigger. And because this is another suburb of Dundee, I wanted to create just a bit of a shop front so that there is this center of the town. And then we've also got this parkland that I've created. Uh, this has some custom cricket grounds, which this won't be the only time I create a cricket grounds within Dundee. There's gonna be a lot of these, but a little bit of a challenging landscape around here. It's quite hilly and you wouldn't really have a cricket ground on such a hilly, um, hilly area. So I've flattened it out, covered it within trees and you've got these two fields that are really quite nice. Probably much smaller than you would really have in a, you know, in real life. There's, you need a fair bit of space for cricket grounds. But within the scale of the city, you know, within like looking at the rest of the place around here, I'm not going to create it any bigger. It actually fits in quite well. If you were to zoom out and look at the whole of Dundee, this takes up a pretty realistic amount of space. But then when you look a little bit closer and see the size of a building, see the size of a house, you go, okay, that's probably not how big a, um, a field would be. But you can see these buses driving around here. So cool, man. I love them. So massive shout outs to all the creators that are helping create all this custom content for us. And Blue Thunder, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to using the rest of these buses and seeing the ride company really thrive within Oceania, especially when we start fleshing out the rest of the city and seeing, uh, seeing it really start to get connected up. I think it's going to be super fun. Um, and for the last little part of the time lapse, we're putting in these cottages. Some pretty amazing views around here, right on the waterfront. I would love to live in a place like this. And... I don't do a huge amount of detail around here. We're going to come back. We'll be back in this area and I would like to do a whole episode where we work on the ocean front, the shoreline, get some ferries, get some wharves and some little beaches. And I think this area would just be super, super nice. But my friends, that is it for today's episode. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoy the cinematics. I want to give a special shout out to some of the wonderful people supporting the channel via Patreon. Kevin Thompson, Matthias Winkelhausen, Bess Brendan, Robin Regals, Vivid Swing, Pablo Hernandez, Paul Wright, Robert Murick, Genius Leonard, and Rodney Green. Thank you guys so much for your support, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye!